Hi everyone, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today I thought we'd talk a little bit more about MoneyWell 2 and more specifically the spending plan. Uh, there's been some changes in MoneyWell 2 uh, that I think that have caused some confusion on how the plan works, so I thought I'd just give you a little uh, demonstration on how they line up using uh, the same document file. That way you can see how they work. Uh, right now we're looking at uh, MoneyWell 1.7, and uh, this was uh, what MoneyWell looked like uh, before. And this is a sample spending plan. And so what you would do with your spending plan is you'd hit this button up here that says spending plan. And there'd be this nice drop down that comes down. And then you would then go through and allocate uh, your salary, uh, all your expense buckets, and set up how you want the money to flow, what the, what the planned amount was, the total. And then monthly, how you, whether you wanted that to go monthly, whether you wanted it to go every two months, quarterly, weekly, to, that kind of stuff. And you would do that line item by a line item for each of your buckets. And then once once you had finished uh, that that setup, then it would uh, then basically you would fill your buckets, and then they would it would fill to the uh, amounts that you set in that spending plan. And so a lot of people were used to this, thought it was a great way of just kind of taking a look at their spending. You can do it uh, from individual months uh, based on your salary, and that's what the spending plan looked like on the original MoneyWell. Now let me pull up the uh, MoneyWell 2 right now. In MoneyWell 2. Uh, your spending plan actually is on your on the buckets tab. So when you come here to the buckets, uh, you can see all of your bucket allocations. But down here it says spending plan in one of these three little icons down here. When you hit the spending plan button, it changes the look of uh, of what you're looking at, and all of these buckets now become what your spending plan is, and that becomes the dollar amounts and things that you've allocated. Let me just slide this on the side here, just so you can see. I'm using the same uh, you know bucket here. I'm using the same amount. Let me just move it all the way over, and you can see in the comparison, right? I've got uh, thirty-two hundred dollars in my salary. There's 3,200 there. Uh, you know, 155 for automobile, 155 here. I just want to show you that it's a different view. It doesn't look quite the same. And part of the reason for that, and let me just uh, pop down the original money well here. Part of the reason for that is that uh, the spending plan has now gone to an events plan. So that what happens now is uh, is you plan by different uh, spending things that you're setting up. Now, one of the advantages of event-based uh, budgeting is that you build your budget amount based on what you know your expenses to be. Uh, for instance, if I was in here in dining, I'm just going to go into the dining tab for a second. And when you look at the different dining expenses, you can see that they have a dining expense here set for every week for $13.85. Now, let's say that every week I, uh, I go to Starbucks and I've decided that, you know what, I, I want to set aside some money uh, for, for Starbucks. And let's say I spend, uh, you know, $10 a week at Starbucks. So I'm going to go a few times and so I want to add that in. So what I would do is I'd come over here and add a new expense expense into this bucket called dining. I'm going to call it Starbucks so that it's up here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my amount. So I said I wanted to, you know, allocate $10. Uh, I want it to start on the, the first of this month, and uh, I want something that it's, it, I want it to repeat, and I want it to repeat every week. So every week I want to have uh, $10 in there so that I can go to Starbucks and uh, and spend that and have that available. And so I've put that in here now. It's going to happen every week. There's the $10. You'll notice that it's already up to my, my dining amount. And uh, the neat thing is up here, it'll also show me what, what percent of my income uh, this money is, just so I have a good idea of you know how much I'm spending and things like that at a glance. And so it does. It shows it up against my income, so that's kind of a nice thing. Now, let's say that, uh, that I'm going along and I, I continue to, to spend this money at Starbucks, and then I decide, you know what, I, I don't want to spend that money at Starbucks anymore. Well, under the old model, you know, if I was to pull up the old one for a second here, under the old model, I went, oh, I've got to change that dining expense. I'd have to come in here. I'd have to go to the dining piece. I'd have to do the math. I've got them set up at two different times. I'd have to subtract five from here and five from here to make sure it equaled the right amount so it brought it down to where it needed to be. And I'd have to do all that work myself. Uh, the beauty of event-based budgeting is right here, all I've got to do is come in here to this Starbucks one, and uh, all I've got to do is delete it and get rid of it and just say, you know, I don't want this to be uh, a part of my uh, expense budget anymore. So I just come up here to edit. I can um, I can cut it, 
and there I've cut that expense it's put it right back to where it needs to be and now my budget is set just like that just by taking out one transaction uh, so it makes it kind of a convenient way to keep your budget in line based on how you spend uh, again it's not it's not the big lump sum uh, budget categories like before where you had to sort of keep those things in your head and figure it out the nice thing now is you can add these things in and immediately on the side you can see the impact that it has on your budget now when I'm all set and I'm going about uh, you know my accounts and things like that if I just go back to my regular cash flow buckets when I'm ready to fill the buckets I just hit this fill buckets button it says this is how much money that it hasn't allocated yet uh, again black means I'm doing good red means I'm in the hole if I click the fill buttons fill buckets button then it goes and takes the rest of my salary here and fills my buckets and it'll make that happen uh, it'll also do it on a on a normal basis depending on how I've set up my salary but that's how my buckets will get filled and I can just you know click click off of this and that goes away and I, I'm back to where I started so when you look at that from a spending plan perspective uh, I think there's a there's a lot to be said for the events based uh, budgeting now one more thing I just wanted to cover real quick uh, since we were looking at this uh, together is on the bucket fills uh, when does my bucket fill how does that happen uh, now you'll notice over here for dining I've got every week uh, this will fill alright and I can set the date and it looks like every week at the end of the month is when it's gonna fill now if you uh, and you can see down here fill timing for the event uh, every event date okay and the event date is right here uh, I can set it differently I can say every day I wanted to allocate a little bit of income into the bucket uh, every week every month every year or I can customize it uh, here and I can choose exactly how I want it done I want it on this day every week or you know so I want it on Monday every week not on Friday uh, because that's that's when I start this uh, spending of the money for dining you know whatever it is I want to do I can say that say done and now it's going to be every week on Monday that bucket's going to fill so that's how you can determine it the other thing is if you want to have uh, instead of doing it by item like that you just say hey I just got one big bucket I want to set the plan differently you can come up here to plan options and you can set it on what type of plan you want monthly four week plan two week one week depending on how your salary and everything comes in and then you can choose the day uh, you want the bucket to refill before the period starts. So if it's going to be uh, on the 15th, uh, but you want to see the money in there on the 10th, uh, you can go ahead and just change that by five days and you're all set. And then from now on, it will automatically allocate that income to your buckets uh, five days before the date when your bucket period starts that you have over here set up. So that works out pretty good uh, in that sense because you're able to sort of figure it out. Now for some of you that maybe you're not into the event-based uh, budgeting, I know there's some of you out there that like the old lump sum that we had on the 1.7. You can still do that uh, with MoneyWell 2.0. What you do is just create a bucket just like this is here. It's a dining expense. It's a bucket for dining. You put an amount in and say, that's it. That's all the detail I want. I don't want any more detail. Uh, that's all I want to set up there and that's fine you can do it that way and then you don't have to use the event based spending you can do it just like you did in the old money well uh, but you're just doing it with one event based line item that's it uh, so there is some flexibility in it it just doesn't look the same as the old one and so you gotta kinda hunt around a little bit to figure it out but hopefully uh, this little tour uh, helps you out and has helped you figure that out uh, like I said overall I like the event based uh, spending it makes it a little bit more flexible uh, for me it did take me a little bit to figure it out but overall I think it is an improvement in money well and I think it's something that you'll enjoy so that's all I have for this week hopefully that helps you in understanding event based spending in money well I'll come back at you with another screencast to help you do more things with your Mac